<laughs> Welcome to day three of DrupalCon Vienna. Ryan and I are the community elected representatives on the board, and we have great pleasure to welcome you all to day three of DrupalCon. I'm Shamla, I'm from Unimity Solutions. I come from Chennai, India. Um, we are a company that started using Drupal for publishing and we're proud that we are today delivering ambitious digital experiences for many enterprises. And I'm Ryan Zarama. I've been a board member since April uh, when I was elected this year to the board. Um, and I've been enjoying finding out what that means and kind of representing, if you will, the developer, contributor, community um, at the board level. And as Shaimala said, uh, we kind of wanted to take part in helping the community think through what it means for us to communicate about and think about Drupal as a platform for ambitious digital experiences. Because um, I think a lot of people hear that and immediately think, well, that's not me. I'm just trying to make a website for this person. Or they think about scale, like I'm not a huge, massive company. Um, forgetting that ambition isn't about how big you are or where you are right now. It's about where you want to be. It's where you want to grow. And I think, I think it's um, just adding on to what Ryan said. It's not how big you start, but how you hope to grow. And it's fascinating to see how young developers get an opportunity in Drupal to learn not just to be in the forefront of technology, but also have an opportunity being part of an open source to really develop and showcase their personality as a whole. Yep, and you know, my personal story um, had me starting Drupal development while I was making blinds in a warehouse at night and selling blenders on eBay, um, and then quickly discovered that contributing to Drupal and being a part of this community was a way to have an impact around the world, including in India, where some of our earliest Ubercart users were very supportive and helpful um, and then all the way up to today with Drupal Commerce 2.0 being released and parties all over the world celebrating what really was like this community accomplishment um, that far exceeded you know, my expectations for my career 10 years ago. Yes, we can't be at this event and I think it's important that we thank the, the people behind this event. A big thank you to the Drupal Association staff and volunteers who have produced this event. I think without their tireless work and many days of doing the things in the background, which seems really, um, to us, just a seamless experience. A big thank you to the Austrian community. It's been amazing. Yes, the uh, Austrian community has been just amazing and starting with the community summits to um, interacting with them at the DrupalCon, it's been an awesome experience just seeing their passion for Drupal. Um, would you take care? We're going to go through some housekeeping slides um, to get things started. If you haven't managed to connect two or more devices to the Wi-Fi yet, um, you can do so using the uh, DrupalCon SSID, the password, of course, being Vienna2017. Um, if you would like to heckle presenters today, please use the hashtags that people are sharing, uh, especially DC Joe. Um, but uh, you know, find us on Twitter, Flickr, and elsewhere. Um, we love to see the, whoa, jeez. Oops, sorry. I'm behind. <laughs> I, like to read, I like to read the feeds. <laughs> um, for coffee, um, which I think was, Missing? There we are. <laughs> um, there will be a coffee break immediately following the uh, opening session here. And paid coffee, of course, as you know, is available in the lobby and elsewhere in the venue in those handsome little black carts uh, for food. Thank you again to Druid for sponsoring um, our lunch here at the conference across the hallway. You can find it there during two separate kind of lunch hours that also have sessions staggered between them. You're vegetarian and have any special meal needs you're taken care of, make sure you walk right to the back and you can find some really good food. I have it on good authority, the hummus is delicious. Um, if you are um, new to DrupalCon or events that, um, that we put on as a community, 
uh, we do like to remind everyone that, um, you know, for our code of conduct, our standards of behavior and in interacting with one another, we communicate about those on the website. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, you can always raise them with Adam or Rachel or email the community working group directly. Um, not sure, you know, for, for new folks and old folks alike in the community, if you haven't been to a Drupal Trivia Night yet, um, you can make plans to attend that this evening at uh, 9 p.m. in Platinum, Vienna. Um, and I believe it's right off the U-Bahn, so it should be easy access. Um, it's always a fun time, so feel free to come out and test your hardcore Drupal knowledge uh, with the rest of us. And uh, be like me and shout out answers every now and then, just to keep it interesting. <laughs> Um, on Friday, tomorrow, we will not have the regular program schedule. Um, instead, we have contribution sprints. So if you are interested in contributing back to Drupal, whether that's documentation, screenshots, usability support, um, patch review, and, and architecture, any of the above or something else entirely, we'd love to have you join us back here tomorrow. And especially for first-time contributors, we would love to have you come join us in the first-time sprinter workshop, um, which will be from 9 to 12, and then I suppose Dries will give you commit access to Drupal core in the afternoon. So. And uh, we do have one session change to announce today. Um, Chris Teitzel will be talking about the future of internet security um, in the 2.15 break. Takes me a second to convert the time to, yeah. Anyways, um, so you can find Chris there, learn more about internet security. And then when he does a poor job, go to the DrupalCon website and evaluate him. Um, <laughs> oh, just kidding. Uh, leave any feedback you have for any of the speakers here at the conference um, on the session forms. It's very helpful for the uh, track chairs and conference organizers to know um, who to feature in different tracks. And it's also helpful for us as presenters uh, to know how to improve the next time that we get a chance to speak. A big thank you to all the sponsors, the diamond, silver, gold, platinum sponsors who've made this, without whom this event would not be possible. You have to make up something else to say. Yes, and also, um, yeah. A thank you to the supporting partners, and they've been sponsoring the work of the Drupal Association and doing the mission critical stuff on Drupal.org. A big hand of applause to them as well. And if for those who weren't able to join us um, at the public board meeting on Wednesday, um, you can review what we presented there uh, about the infrastructure, because it's pretty phenomenal, um, the level of activity that we have on Drupal.org, from hundreds of thousands of test runs to millions of visitors served, and of course, plenty of engagement and customization around the issue queues and credit system and so on. All of that funds that and keeps the lights on for all of us, so very grateful. And grateful also to Druid for being a diamond sponsor here at DrupalCon Vienna. They are this morning's presenting sponsor for the community keynote. And if you'd like to get to know them and their work more in Finland, you can just find them right out the door on the way back into the um, exhibit hall. And last but not least, um, today we have the honor of hearing from Joe Schindelar, um, who is the lead trainer and lead developer of Drupalize Me. Uh, I've known Joe for a few years through his work at Lullabot and now at Drupalize Me, and I've really worked hard at DrupalCon Bogota to convince him to do training videos on salsa. Um, but after he went out with me at night to a salsa bar and saw what that looked like, he decided against featuring us doing a salsa training <laughs> um, and kept with the, uh, the, the more traditional Drupal program. So for folks that maybe are new to Drupal or want to learn more about how to do Drupal, Drupal Ask Me is a great option for learning from Joe and from others who just put on great training videos. Um, so again, let's welcome Joe to the stage, and you can find him on Twitter, and Drupal.org is EOJ the Brave, which is Joe spelled backwards, and it took me like six years to figure that out. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. It could be like a setting. Oh. Hi, friends. <laughs> I, I'm going to go ahead and start, because I don't need the slides for the first part anyways. Um, Ryan and Shamala, thank you. You know how to make somebody feel special and important, and I appreciate the introduction. Um, what, and it's also nice, because now you got a lot of the important details out of the way, and I don't have to tell everybody my name. Um, I do. Um, there are a couple of additional things, though, that I want to tell you guys about me before I get started. I have some background information that I think will help um, provide a little bit of context for the stories that I'm going to tell today. Um, I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, if you don't know where that is, it's about dead center in the North American continent. I like to joke that my house is about 3,000 kilometers drive from any ocean, um, which is OK, except for if you want to visit the ocean. Uh, Minnesota is known for things like hot dish and hockey and people who like to talk about the weather. Did you know that Minneapolis has 151 days average every year that are below freezing? Kind of wild. Um, Minneapolis is not known for being a destination for, oh, here we go, this is working now. Yes is not known as a destination for people that like to snowboard, which is unfortunate because I'm a big fan of snowboarding and I like to do that a lot. Um, you know, here in Austria, you get the Austrian Alps, which is a great destination for snowboarding. In Minnesota, we have Afton Alps, which you can see here, and you can see both the top and the bottom of the hill in the same photo. Um, this, this run is the longest run at Afton Alps. It takes approximately 45 to 60 seconds to get down the hill. Um, you can make in the average of like eight to 10 turns and you're at the bottom of the hill. But it's still really fun. When you're passionate about something, anytime you can find the opportunity to get out and do it is a good time to get out and do it. Um, and I feel the same way about Drupal. It's something that I've always been or at least as long as I've been doing Drupal, I've been really passionate about. And any time that I can find the opportunity to do more things with Drupal or get more involved, I like to take that opportunity to do so. Today I want to talk about sharing and all the different ways that we as members of the Drupal community can share with one another. Sharing things like code when you contribute to Drupal core or sharing time when you volunteer at an event or give a presentation sharing ideas when you show up at a sprint and you help mentor someone else on how to contribute to Drupal, or sharing knowledge and being a teacher or helping to update the documentation. I think there are a lot of different ways that we as members of the community can share with one another and that will help improve the project, help improve the community, and also help us improve ourselves. <clears throat> and I think it's an important thing for us to talk about. Um, I'm a firm believer that every single person in this room has something that they can share with everyone else in this room. And that when they do so, when you share the thing, those things with the people sitting next to you and the rest of our community, you're going to make Drupal better and you're also going to make yourself better. I think that sharing is a great way to increase the diversity of our community, both the cultural diversity and the technical diversity. And that when we do that, when more of us add our voices to the pool and we grow the community, as a, as a more diverse community, we can get better at answering complicated questions with new solutions that, as individuals, we may not be able to come up with. I think that when we share with each other, we help build each other up, and that's an important thing to do. I think that sharing makes you as an individual smarter. Like I said, I think it also makes Drupal as a community smarter. I think that sharing is a great way to create opportunities for yourself, maybe in the terms of a job opportunity in the future, but also for your friends and your coworkers and others around you, maybe in the form of a job opportunity in the future. Uh, you know, I think it's probably obvious and goes without saying, but Drupal or sharing definitely makes Drupal better. And sometimes it just feels good, and it's okay to do things just because it makes you feel good or you enjoy it. Um, I, I've been doing Drupal 
things for quite a while. And one of the things I've learned through it, that through sharing, I've gotten a lot of opportunities. And, um, you know, at this point, I've got a job doing something that I love. I get to spend time teaching people and empowering them to use Drupal to create awesome things and to solve their own problems. And that feels really good for me. Um, I've got, had the opportunity to travel all around the world to four different continents and a bunch of different cities. And, and maybe more importantly, I've gotten to meet a lot of people along the way and share my experiences traveling with them and have them share their cities and the places that they live with me. And I've learned a lot about myself and about Drupal in doing so. And I think that all of these opportunities have come because other people in the community were willing to take the time to share with me. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, I need a sip of water. Uh, so like I said, I've been doing Drupal for a, a long time. I think that one of the things that, about this journey that has been interesting for me is that um, in getting involved in the community, it, it has not been a thing where all of a sudden I woke up one morning and I said, you know what, today I'm going to be an active member of the Drupal community. Today I know how to participate and I know how to share. But instead it's been a bit more of a gradient. Uh, over time I've learned that there's a real value in sharing and that in taking the time to get involved in the community, has afforded me a lot of opportunities. What I want to do today is tell you some of the stories about how I've made that transition and kind of this fuzzy space in between the period of time where I used Drupal to build websites for myself or for clients, but didn't yet really understand the importance of contributing to the community and being involved. Um, and then there's this sort of fuzzy period of time in the middle, and now there's the current era in which you could say I've totally drunk the Drupal Kool-Aid and learned that participating and being an active member of the community has a lot of value and is really important. So in 2008, I attended my first ever Drupal community event. Um, and so maybe a little background before this story that is also helpful. For those of you that know me from the Drupal community as someone that gives presentations um, at DrupalCon or has their face on a bunch of Drupal training videos, it may be sort of a surprise, but I tend to be a bit more on the introvert side of this introvert extrovert scale. And um, like for example, coming to DrupalCon works well for me at this point. I've had a lot of practice. You know, I can I can practice what I'm gonna say. In, for each slide before I get up on stage, so that's a little less scary. And I can spend the week in advance of a DrupalCon or a Drupal event thinking about who are the people that I might run into when I'm there. And when I run into them, what might they want to talk to me about? And when I'm talking to them, what are we going to talk about? And I can just sort of mentally be prepared for these things. And it's really helpful. Uh, the flip side of that is when I meet people that I maybe wasn't prepared to talk to, like in the exhibit hall, it's awesome, and it's a really valuable experience, but then I also find myself occasionally being like, eh, I gotta go to the bathroom, I'll be right back. And I walk over, and I go in the bathroom, and I wash my hands, and then I come out, and I usually like walk the other way down the hall, um, which now I realize is not gonna work anymore, but, um, but I say this because in my journey to getting involved with the Drupal community, one of my biggest hurdles has been dealing with that, has been dealing with the, the times where I feel uncomfortable putting myself out in front of other people and just having the willingness to say hello. So when I attended my first Drupal community event um, in 2008, I actually attended two events that summer, uh, one of which was Drupal Days. It was the first um, of what is now the Twin Cities Drupal Camp. It was a small camp organized by a bunch of volunteers. It took place at the Science Museum in Minnesota. And um, I, I decided to go. I, I had heard about it. I read about it on groups.drupal.org and thought, you know, there aren't really any classes that you can go and take to learn Drupal. Um, if you want to advance your career and you want to get better at this, this seems like a good opportunity to do that. And it'll be okay because you can definitely sit at a table in the corner where there will be no one else and you don't have to talk to them and you can just listen and absorb the information and it'll be great. Um, the funny thing is, not only did I attend Drupal Days, I also ended up giving a presentation at the event. 
<laughs> right, why did you give a presentation if you didn't even want to go? Well, it turns out that it wasn't because I felt like I knew something about Drupal that I could share with anyone else. It was more of leverage for me to be able to convince my employer that I should go to the event but not have to take the day off of work. And so I convinced them. It was sort of like, I'll give a presentation, and I'll put our logo all over the slides, and then you can pay me to go there for the day, and it'll be great, and maybe we'll meet people that um, also do Drupal things, and if we need to hire someone in the future, it'll be a good opportunity. And so I submitted a session, and it was selected, and again, probably not because I knew anything about Drupal, but because they were just looking for warm bodies to give presentations, and I was willing to do that. Um, so I remember going to this Drupal Days event, and, and I've submitted a session, and I'm already a bit nervous, and I show up, and you go to the registration booth, and they've got little name tags, and you write your name down on the tag, and you put it on, and you walk into the room, and this, the conference is small enough that there's just two rooms. There's an advanced track and a beginner track, and, and then two rooms, and we all started in one room, and the room has a bunch of round tables in it. And so I walk in and I'm kind of present. I'm not the first person there and I'm not the last person there. And I've got this problem where it's like the lunchroom here. So you go into the lunchroom and you get your lunch. And now you have to decide, do I sit at one of the tables that has no one at it and hope that no one else will sit at the table so I don't have to talk to them? Or do I sit over here at this table that has a handful of people sitting at it already and maybe meet some new people? And I'm like, okay, I'm here to like, meet people and get involved with the community. So I sit down at one of the tables that has people at it already. And, and then, of course, I like, get my backpack, and I pull out my notebook, and I set it on the table, and I get my schedule, and I'm like, circling things on the schedule like, as if I'm trying to f figure out what sessions I'm going to go to, even though it's like uh, you know, two tracks. I could have memorized the entire schedule. What I'm really doing is avoiding making eye contact with anyone or talking to them. And like everyone else at the table is doing the same thing. We're all just kind of like, eh, I hope no one says anything. And then I'm like, all right. The introvert in me is like, this is getting really awkward. I need to break the silence here and like at least say something. And so I say, hi, I'm Joe. What do you guys do with Drew Paul? And, and so here I am, sitting at this table with a bunch of people I don't know, um, already feeling like an imposter because I'm going to give a presentation in a little bit, and they're, then they're going to know for real that I don't know anything about Drupal. And now I've just admitted to them that you know, within 15 minutes of being here, I don't even know how to say the name of the software that we're all here to talk about. Um, and as you can imagine, it was kind of embarrassing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was quite embarrassing. Though, but thankfully, the people at the table that were sitting there, they didn't laugh at me, they didn't make fun of me, they were just really generous and they corrected me and they informed me that it's not Droop Owl or Drew Paul, it is in fact Drupal. And I can tell you something, I have never gotten it wrong again. <laughs> really? That, that's what I'm gonna get applause for? I, I can pronounce the name? <laughs> All right. Um, but I've also never laughed at or made fun of or in any way felt anything other than empathy for anyone else that's ever gotten it wrong. Like the first thing I did was say, oh, you know what, that's funny. I totally did the same thing. The name of the software is in fact Drupal. Uh, and so that was an important lesson for me in just sort of making sure, well, both I can pronounce it now, but also in participating in a community and being generous and being courteous and not, um, making fun of people in any way. Um, so then it becomes time for me to give my presentation. And, and I stand up and I give a presentation about the Devel module. And I've got 30 minutes to give this presentation and like 12 slides or something like that. And so in the 30 minute time slot, I'm like, all right, I can cover everything in the Devel module. And then I proceed to rush through like every single slide. And it takes about 15 minutes to get through the presentation. And I've definitely covered everything that the Devel module can do. And I know this because I printed out the source code so that I could read it on the bus, like to and from work, um, just to make sure that I was going to cover everything that the module could do. And, um, and so now, I've given the entire presentation in 15 minutes, which means we've got 15 minutes for Q&A, and all I can think is, oh man, I hope nobody asks any questions, because I won't know how to answer the questions, and it's going to be really awkward. Um, but of course, people did ask questions. 
And, and then something awesome happened. I actually knew the answer to some of the questions that people asked. Um, and some of the questions I didn't know the answer to, but it was okay because people in the room that did know the answer were willing to stand up and say, hey, you know what? I know the answer to that question. And it was this really cool experience where I went from, you know, at one moment feeling like, all right, I got this. I know everything about this module that anyone could ever want to know to immediately feeling like, oh, they know. They know that I don't know everything. I, and I made that obvious. Um, to a moment where, as a community, those of us in the room were able to share our knowledge with one another. And I guarantee you that every single person that walked out of that room learned something about the Devel module that they didn't know before, including me. And I think that the lesson there for me was that my being willing to give the presentation, even if I didn't have all of the answers, my being willing to start the conversation was an important part of that experience in a way for all of us to share and learn together. And I learned an important lesson from that. I think the lesson for me was that everyone has something to share. Even if you're not the person that wrote the module, even if you don't know every single thing that it does, just being willing to be the one that starts the conversation means you've got something that you can share and that you're going to get a conversation started and get other people involved. Regardless of where you are in your journey along the path to becoming uh, a Drupal contributor, you've got something unique that you can bring to the community and that you can share with the rest of us. And I think that's a really important thing to remember. <clears throat> Another thing that happened as a result of attending that uh, Drupal Days in 2008, that room where I you know, initially was very embarrassed that I didn't know what I was talking about, I met a bunch of people that day who now, 10 years later, I'm still friends with. Uh, a lot of them don't do Drupal anymore, but we continue to be friends. Some of them do do Drupal still and live in the uh, Minneapolis community. And I see them on a regular basis. And it's always kind of amazing to me to look back and think about how just sort of being willing to step out of my comfort zone and go out and talk to other people a little bit about Drupal, develop these friendships and relationships that have lasted for such a long time. And I value that quite a bit. So, Everyone has something to share, but sometimes figuring out what it is that you have to share can be a challenging thing to do. It certainly was for me. You know, I had this idea, uh, and I still struggle with this today. I have this idea that there's like, this is a room full of all of these amazing Drupal experts, you know, people like Angie and Wim and Tim Plunkett and uh, people who know more about Drupal than I could ever possibly know. What is it that I have that I could contribute and share with them? Wouldn't it make more sense for the people that wrote the Devel module to give the presentation about it than for me to give that presentation? Because they certainly know how it works better than I do. Um, you know, I deal with this today still. I, I was thinking about this this morning. Two days ago, Dries was standing up here on this stage, and now I'm standing here giving a presentation. And this morning, all I could think is like, well, what, what do I have that I could say about sharing with Drupal that he doesn't know already and that he couldn't tell you better than I could do? And, and maybe nothing. Maybe there isn't anything that I can say that he wouldn't be able to say already, but just me being willing to do it is contributing and starting that conversation. So I think that's an important thing to remember. This is, an or this is a um, phenomenon known as imposter syndrome. It's basically like, I assume that everyone else in this room knows more than I do and that I don't have anything that I can contribute. But it's not true. You may walk into a room where everyone in that room knows more about Drupal than you do, or the person sitting next to you does, but the things that you know aren't just limited to what you know about Drupal. Every one of us has a different life experience that we bring to the table whenever we contribute to Drupal or share our knowledge with other people. And that's just as important as what we know about Drupal. Um, you know, every, all of the experiences that you've had, that diversity that you bring to the Drupal community helps us to think about Drupal and solve problems in new and unique ways. Additionally, even if what you know is the same as what somebody else knows, just being willing to say it out loud or share those things again is valuable. You know, in the marketing world, there's this idea that you have to tell somebody, you have to say the words like five or six or seven times before people internalize that. I think the same is true when you're learning new concepts like, you know, how hook form alter works. You have to experience it multiple times and have heard it from multiple people before you really internalize it and make that knowledge your own. And so getting to hear it from a variety of sources, that's really valuable. 
So I think for me, it was a, just a good reminder that there's a lot of things that I bring to the table that I can share, um, in, including my knowledge about Drupal. And when I do that, I get to help make Drupal better. Because I think this is what it looks like when all of us do that. When we all combine together, there's certainly going to be overlap in the things that we know about Drupal. You know, you turn to the people sitting on either side of you, there's going to be overlap in your knowledge about Drupal. There's also going to be gaps in, in that information. Um, but when we combine that together as a community, in the sum total of what we know becomes greater than each of us as individuals. So I think that's an important thing to remember. And it's what makes an open source economy like Drupal's, in that where everyone shares the knowledge that they have, really powerful. I like to think of this as sharing creates diversity. Um, both cultural diversity, in that it allows other people with different life experiences to bring that experience to the table and to make sure that when you're solving for a problem, a particular problem in a module or a user experience, that you're keeping in mind what they know and the experiences that they've had using the internet or using the software, but also technical backgrounds and technical diversity too. When we bring in people from other communities and allow them to participate in the Drupal community, we benefit from the knowledge that they bring with. When you participate, we benefit, benefit from the knowledge that you bring with from all of your previous experience, whether that's writing Drupal code or anything else. Um, and I like, that, I like that. I think that as a whole, the more diverse our community comes, both cultural and technical, the better we're going to get at solv solving hard problems. Um, and that's an important thing to remember. Uh, my friend Wes sums this up really well in this message that he posted on Twitter a few days ago. Wes said, being the smartest doesn't matter. Getting a diverse and reliable group that covers the needs of a project is the most important thing for good work. And I think that Drupal is a really good example of this. The fact that we have such a big and diverse group of people is what makes the project as powerful and as capable as it is. It's not that there is one or two rock star developers that wrote all of the code and made it do all of the things that it's capable of doing. It's that all of you contributed what you had that you could provide that made it better together. So I, I agree with Wes on this. Sharing creates diversity. And I like to think that we all do better when we all do better. So, so around the same time that I attended my first Drupal Days event in 2008, I also mustered up the courage to try this submitting patches to Drupal, uh, Drupal.org. And, and for me, it was a little bit of a bumpy path, and I want to tell you about that. Um, my first patch, at least the first one that I remember, it may not actually be the first patch, um, but I definitely remember this, is that there's, this was for like Drupal 5, there's a, a, the admin men, menu module. If you're not familiar with it, it adds like a black toolbar across the top of the page, similar to the toolbar in Drupal 8. It moves all the administration links up there. And for a client project that I was working on, there was a requirement where we needed to add an edit link in the top right corner, and it had to be in the admin menu toolbar. So this is like a couple of lines of code that I wrote that would move the tab that is normally above at the top of a node on a page where you can click edit. It moved that edit link into the toolbar. That was it. Nothing complicated. And I thought, well, this is cool. Maybe it would be useful to other people. I mean, and it turns out, like, I don't know, 10 years later, we actually have this feature in Drupal 8 now. There's an edit link in the top right corner. Um, so I wrote a patch for this. And in order to do so, I, you know, I, I read the documentation for the diff module, and I learned how to make a patch, and I made a patch, and I went and probably read some of the documentation and, and uploaded that patch to Drupal.org. Um, or at least I eventually uploaded the patch to Drupal.org. What really happened is I made the patch, and I, I made this like after work in my free time. And uh, well, I guess I had written the code at work, and then I went home and in my free time did this. And I made the patch. And I go to Drupal.org, and you have to upload the file. And then you've got to fill out this really complicated form where you can submit an issue. Uh, and you have to come up with a title for your issue. And I'm like, what am I going to call this? I, uh, patch? And then you have to fill in the body field. And it's like, what does this do? And I'm like, I, it makes an edit button? Um, and I, I remember agonizing for a very long time over 
what am I going to title this issue? What am I going to put in the body of this issue? What if my patch is wrong? What if my code is wrong? What if when I upload this, someone notices that my code is wrong? And then they tell me that it's wrong. And I sort of fought this demon that was like, no, it's OK. You should submit it. Don't worry. It'll be fine. And then this like, eh, just, just don't do it. Just let the module maintainer do it. Maybe, maybe there's a reason that this feature doesn't exist. I'm sure they already thought of it and just thought, well, we don't need an edit button up there. So we, we don't need to implement that feature. And, and I struggled with this a lot. I actually, uh, I filled out the form, and I attached the file. And then I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sleep on this. And if I still feel like submitting this patch in the morning, then I'll submit the form. And so I get up in the morning, and I go to submit the form. And now I've hit the like form cache expiration. And so I actually have to fill the field out again and go through this whole thing where I'm like, oh, god. And so I eventually, I eventually submitted the patch. And then I spent like the entire day hitting refresh, <laughs> waiting to see, is anybody commenting? Did anybody see this? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Eventually, though, somebody saw it. And they took a look at the patch. And they replied. And um, the very first response that I got, and what I learned from that response was that um, my code was wrong. I obviously didn't know how to make a diff because I had made the diff the wrong way. Like I tried to remove code that didn't exist. Um, <laughs> and, and, and basically, it was this like, hey, sorry. Well, not even sorry. It seems like you diffed the wrong way. Isn't there a more generic way for this conditional statement? Don't forget, we're dealing with the menu system. And all of this for me is like, the menu what? <laughs> OK. Um, it was tough. I, and, and I, I read this, and you know, looking back at this now, I, I, I went and like, actually read the thread again. And it's definitely not as bad in, as, of an experience as it is in my memory. But I think the important thing is to remember that at the time, the way that this made me feel was not awesome. I basically come away from this feeling like, you did it wrong. Do you even know what you're doing? And the obvious answer was no. I don't know what I'm doing. Can't you tell? Um, and, and it sucked. I didn't feel good about it. Uh, and, and unfortunately, I, I know that this is not a unique story. I've talked to a number of other people that have had similar experiences where you sort of antagonize over, um, is it worth me taking the time to write this patch or contribute this thing? What do I know that they don't know? They, you know somebody else probably already thought of this and already had this idea. And then you, you finally kind of get over that hurdle, and you contribute your patch. And you get an un unfortunate response of, do you even know what you're doing? Uh, and the obvious answer is no. No, you don't know what you're doing. Um, in that moment, I was totally heartbroken. And it was not fun. It took me 10 months to muster up the courage to submit another patch after that. Uh, and I did. I finally came back around, and I was like, no, this is important. I'm going to submit another patch. I'm really going to do this. And so I wrote a patch. It's similar. It's like three lines of code, um, similarly not useful. Um, I upload the patch. I antagonize over it for a while. I refresh a bunch. And the first response is, I noticed that you don't know how to make a diff. <laughs> you made it the wrong way. And I'm like, oh my god, I did it again. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know how to do this now, <laughs> most of the time. I know where to find the documentation that tells you how to do this. Um, but the, the response this time was a little bit different, too. So I made the diff the wrong way, and I wrote code that didn't really accomplish the thing appropriately. But instead of just sort of being mean and saying, do you even know what you're doing? Jared replies, hey, it looks like you got this wrong. Um, Later in the comment, you can't see it here, there's a link to the documentation that says, if you want to know how to do this the right way, go check out this documentation. Um, and, I, and this is a really simple patch. So I actually went ahead and just applied it anyways, because it turns out you can do that with the diff tool. You can just pass in a flag, and it works. Um, and when I did that I, and was testing the code, I noticed that there were some other mistakes. Have you ever seen this function in Drupal? Did you know that it would do this thing? Uh, maybe you should try that instead. And so instead of just putting me off and saying, you don't know what you're doing, um, Jared said, it looks like you don't know what you're doing. But that's OK, because I do know what I'm doing. And here's where you can find some more information about uh, what you need to do and how to make this work. And so that was a, a much more pleasant experience. Um, I like that. Holy cow, I contributed a patch. 
uh, and it got applied. That's awesome. And so then, as you might expect, I waited for, I don't know, another like 10 months or so, and I decided to contribute another patch. Uh, this time, I decided I'm going to contribute something to Drupal core, which is like a whole new level of intimidating. At least it was for me. I would do this thing where I would go home and I would pick an issue on, in the issue queue and I'd be like, all right, tonight I'm going to contribute. And then I would read the entire issue, like all 100 comments, and I would get to the end and I'd be like, that's cool. I, I, I don't have anything to add to this discussion. But it did take me an hour to read all of the comments. And now I'm done with the time that I've allotted to contributing tonight. So I guess I'm going to go to bed and try again tomorrow. And I would do this like every night. And I'd, so I've read a lot of comment threads on Drupal.org. Um, eventually, I, I mustered up the courage to contribute. And I decided that I was going to, I was interested in the image handling work that was going on for Drupal 7. I thought, OK, this is important to me. I think it's really cool. I've read all of the comment threads a couple of times. Um, I have some sense of what's going on. And there's a patch here that needs to be re-rolled, which is really just a matter, at least for me, it's like, I can do this. All I'm going to do is take somebody else's work and make sure that it still applies. I don't even have to come up with new ideas. Uh, but anyways, in that process, I, I submitted an, another patch. I put it together. I uploaded the patch. I actually got the diff the right way this time. That was important. Um, and then Nate came along and responded to my, the work, the effort that I had put in. And the first thing he says is, thank you. And that to me was like, wow, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, and <laughs> that made me feel really good. That made me feel like I had something to contribute. And then Nate also said, um, he answered some of my questions. I posted the code saying, I don't know entirely what I'm doing. In fact, what I had done was I had written like 300 lines of code to implement some functionality that already existed in Drupal. There was just a function that you could call that would do the thing, but I didn't know that that function existed. And so Nate was like, you know, he answered my questions and then also pointed out, did you know that you could just call this function instead? And I was like, no, I didn't. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, and and eventually, after a lot of back and forth, um, the patch got finished. And it got committed to Drupal core. And I had this moment of like, holy cow, that's my name next to a commit in Drupal core. It was really cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and it honestly felt really good. Um, the takeaway for me, for me from this experience was that every time you interact with someone in our community, you should be aiming to build that person up and help them become a better participant in our community. Um, and that when you do so, you're making our community stronger. Because when you or anyone else takes the time to share or to be a mentor to other people, um, you get to build them up and you get to make them better. When you say thank you instead of you did it wrong, even if you say thanks, you did it wrong, is a lot different than just saying, you obviously don't know what you're doing. Uh, and the cool thing for me that was that this experience was super motivating. I had finally like, had some success. People were nice to me. And I, I continued to get more and more involved over time. You know, after that first experience where I uploaded a patch and it was wrong um, and I had a poor experience, I could have easily walked away and never come back and continue to participate in the Drupal community. But I didn't. I gave it another shot. And thanks to the generosity of the people that I interacted with those second and third times, I, I, I discovered that I liked doing this and I kept doing it. And I ended up contributing quite a bit over the next couple of months. Um, and, and, Drupal, and Drupal's image handling system is better because of it. And so that's, that was cool. And it, I think it's important to remember that. Um, I also, so I was on a phone call. I, it turns out that I now actually work with both Jared and Nate. Um, and I was on a phone call uh, about a month ago with Jared. And I was telling, he was telling me, I heard that you're going to be the community keynote at DrupalCon. Congratulations. And I was like, oh, thank you. It's funny thing that you mentioned that. I'm actually going to tell a story about you in, the, in my presentation. And he's like, what? What, what story? And so I, I told him the story that I just told you. And at the end, Jared's like, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I do. Um, and it was a, in that moment, I had an important lesson, which was, you know, 
when someone else in the community does something like that for you, when they have an impact that influences you and, and allows you to continue to be motivated and involved in the community, it's also important to remember to say thank you to them um, and sort of celebrate those things that were maybe very important to you, but someone else didn't even remember. Because when I was able to tell Jared, this was really cool, thank you, you know, you that moment influenced the next 10 years of my life. That's pretty cool. And, and, and Jared was like, I remember that now. Thanks. <laughs> Oop. Um, I mentioned snowboarding earlier. So in addition to Drupal, one of the other things that I'm really passionate about is snowboarding. Um, believe it or not, I do things other than Drupal, and some of them involve leaving my house once in a while. Uh, one of those is teaching snowboarding. I've actually been doing this longer than I've been doing Drupal. And I got started teaching snowboarding um, in a, I could get down the hill, but I wasn't very good at it. Uh, one of my friends worked at a ski school that was desperate for snowboard instructors. And I, got a, I was able to get the position teaching snowboarding, not because I was better at snowboarding, or not even because I was good at it, but I was good enough that I could get down the hill, and that was better than some of the other people could do. And they were like, you're a warm body, you seem nice, you can get down the hill. We, you know, that's better than the kids that are just starting can do. And so I would go and I would teach snowboarding. Teach. I would go down the hill with the, the students. Um, and, and, and they got better and I got better. Primarily, I think, just because of mileage, which is, you know, similar to learning a new software or participating in a community. You have to do these things many times. You don't get it right the first time. You get better at it every time that you do it after that. Mileage is just as important as actually, you know, the, the first time that you've done it. Um, and, and what happened is, like, over time, in that experience of teaching snowboarding, I, I also got better at teaching snowboarding. I learned, you know, initially it was like, go down the hill. All right, now turn right. And I learned that it's a totally different thing to sell, tell someone to turn right than it is to tell them how to turn right. And you had to learn a lot about physics and the way that a snowboard works and the way that your muscles work and, you know, rotational inertia and all these things that I didn't even know existed um, in order to be able to tell someone else how to accomplish them. And I learned how to do those things. And, and in doing so, it made me a better snowboarder. So in learning how to teach other people how to snowboard, or in learning how to you know, help other people contribute to Drupal, I've gotten better at doing so. In the medical profession, you often hear this expressed as see one, do one, teach one. And the idea is that if you really want to master some technology um, the, or, or skill or anything, the process that you, you go through is first seeing it, so watching somebody else do it, or read the documentation. Um, in the medical world, this would be observing someone performing the surgery and, as a student. And then you move on to doing it yourself. You're writing the patch now. You're the one performing the surgery. You're the one that's teaching, or you know, you're the one that is um, getting down the hill on the snowboard and actually knowing what you're doing. Um, and then after that, you get to move on to teaching. And, and this is sort of like, in order to be able to teach someone, you need to really understand how the thing works. And so now you're, not only are you the doctor performing the surgery, you're performing it in a school environment where other people get to watch and learn from you. This is like going to a mentored sprint at DrupalCon. So you get to go to the sprint tomorrow. And if this is your first time, you get to sit down at a table and you get to watch someone else or participate with someone else who has done this before, um, what the process is like, how to make the diff the right direction. And then you get to go home and you get to practice this on your own. You get to write more code or you get to contribute more documentation and, and do this yourself. And then next year you get to come back and go to the mentored sprint again. And now you can take these skills that you have and you can be a mentor because you know a little bit more than the, someone that is new to this for whom this is their first sprint. And you can help them figure out how to make the diff the right way and how to move on and demonstrate that you've mastered that skill. I think of this as sharing is a, is a way that makes you smarter. Um, you and, and the people that you're sharing with as well. So in addition to building others up, sharing builds you up. Um, after, so 
as a, as a result of like teaching snowboarding for a number of years, I learned that something that I really en enjoy doing is teaching. And so when I was looking for new opportunities and this opportunity came up to get a, a contract position teaching people how to use Drupal, I was like, I know how Drupal works, sort of. At least I know how to make a diff, um, which is more than some people know. And, and I like traveling, and this says you can travel the world and empower people with Drupal. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll try that. I'll apply it for the job and, and see how it goes. And, um, and I got a position doing this, working uh, at Lullaby at the time, doing training. Uh, it turns out that, um, so back in the day when you would apply for a job at Lullabot, you would submit your application and then your application would get posted on this internal wiki and everyone in the company would look at your application and they would rate it and they would say like, oh, this is what I think about Joe, this is what my experiences with him in the past have been like, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so eventually I get the job and I get access to this internal wiki and the very first thing I do is search for my name. And, um, and I discover this thread where like, Everyone that worked there prior to me was discussing my merits and whether or not they thought the company should hire me. Um, and and it, was, it was mostly positive. Uh, and in particular, there was a comment from Nate, who I had interacted with in the issue queue previously, that was like, I don't know him personally, but he's been super helpful in the issue queue, and he's done this, this, and this, and he seems like a good guy. Um, and, and I think that in, in part, that's how I ended up getting this job. Uh, and for me, this was this cool moment where I was like, wow, the fact that I was willing to share in the past and contribute some, some of what I know and some of my time to making Drupal better led to this really cool opportunity where in the future I got a job. At the time, I couldn't have projected that you know, in a year or two years, the result of this is going to be I'm going to get a job teaching Drupal. But it's interesting to look back on it and see how that thing that I shared in the past has created opportunities for me now. Um, as a, a Drupal instructor, one of the things that I learned how to do was explain some of the weird nuances of Drupal. Um, in particular, with Drupal 7, um, I guess 6 too, when, you see, when you're creating a theme for versions of Drupal that are not Drupal 8, um, you've got template files, .tpl, .php files, where you put your markup and, and a little bit of PHP. And then you've got the template file, template.php, where you put all of your PHP and none of your markup. Um, and, and so we would give these theming trainings and you'd be like, all right, so what you need to do is you need to create a template file and put some markup on it. And then in the other template file, you need to put the PHP and people would get really confused about like the difference between a template file and the template file. And I got super good at explaining this. Like I could give a presentation and like two or three slides, I could clarify all of this for you and it would be not confusing to anyone in the room, which I thought was a really cool uh, skill. Um, but it turned out that for a lot of the people in the room, it didn't matter how well I could explain it. This was still just a really confusing thing. Like, why bother learning how to explain this when you could just instead fix it? And, um, and I had an experience where one of the students in a, a workshop that I was teaching sort of pointed this out to me. And it was like, I get it. It makes sense. You could also rename the file. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you could. That's a really good idea. I hadn't even thought about that. You know, I've, I've, I've become so accustomed to this. I inherently know the difference. I don't even have to think about it. So I wasn't able to see what they, as a, a new person or new to this, was able to see about how the system worked that maybe didn't make sense. You know, sort of the, the Achilles heel of expertise is you, you, you see what you expect to see your expectations get set through repeated experience. And so you've experienced this enough times that it's just like, oh, I know how it works. Um, I don't need to think about this anymore. Um, and I, I learned that like one of the benefits of sharing and especially of t t teaching and, and sharing knowledge with people is that sometimes that will allow you to see things through a different set of eyes that will help you solve problems in unique and novel ways that you yourself may not be able to think of. Um, you know, when you work with a technology like Drupal or any technology, the thing that makes you really good at it, the thing that makes you an expert, is all of the assumptions that you can make about how the thing works so that you don't have to go look it up in the documentation every time. But those assumptions are also the thing that makes it really hard for you to understand why some certain things may be complicated because you just gloss over that complicatedness because you already know how it works. Um, 
new people can help you check those assumptions. Sharing your knowledge and trying to explain things to other people can help you check those assumptions and make sure that we're improving the software, not just glossing over the details. Uh, I think this is just one of the many, many ways that we can see that sharing um, knowledge and, and, and in other ways makes Drupal better. Again, this comes back to that idea of creating a culture or a community that is more diverse uh, culturally and technically is going to allow us to be better at checking those assumptions and coming up with good solutions to uh, all of the problems that we're going to encounter. So sharing makes Drupal better. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, last story. Um, I also, in, in the Twin Cities, in Minneapolis where I'm from, there's a chapter of an organization called Coder Dojo. Uh, you can go to Coder Dojo. Uh, as a volunteer, you can go and teach people uh, about programming and about the internet and technology and get them really excited about how cool the internet is, uh, which it's really cool. I get excited about telling people that. Um, and kids come to Coder Dojo. It takes place on Saturdays. I occasionally volunteer at it, probably not as often as I should. At one particular time, I, um, I showed up to volunteer, and I went over to the web development table, and I got paired up with these three boys that had never been to Coder Dojo before, but they wanted to learn about how web development worked. And I was like, I got this. Uh, and I go over, and I like grab one of the whiteboards, and I wheel it over to the table, and I grab a marker, and I'm like, all right, let's start with the basics. And so on the whiteboard, I draw like a picture of a browser, and then on the other side, I draw like a a server, or probably like a, a Drupal drop. And then I draw a line connecting the two, and a little cloud over the line. And then in the cloud, I write TCP slash IP. And I'm like, all right, so if you want to know how the web works, we got to start here. And I kind of launch into this. And, I, and, pretty, and these, these boys are like 10, 11 years old. Um, <laughs> And, but I'm like, I'm an expert at this. I was born to explain this problem. And, um, and I very quickly realized that they were not, it, this was boring to them. They weren't interested in the intricacies of like packet routing. Um, what they really wanted to do was like hack websites. And so I back up and I'm like, oh, okay, this isn't going anywhere. Um, Let's start again. Hi, my name's Joe. I like snowboarding. I'm excited about you know, the Olympics coming up. I'm really hopeful that Danny Davis will land his triple on the you know, super pipe this year. And, and then, what are you guys interested in? And they're like, oh, hockey. And I'm like, of course you're interested in hockey. We're from Minnesota. And so um, we start talking, and we go, and, we look, and I ask them to show me some of their favorite hockey websites. And we look at some of the websites. And in particular, we look at a, a site that is showing the scores for one of the recent games and the Minnesota team has lost. And I'm like, we could fix this, you guys. And so I pop open the web inspector in Chrome, and I'm like, so this is HTML. This is how the web works. Um, this, th this little bit right here represents the, the score. This thing right here, this is called a class. Look, let's just move this class to the other side. Hey, look, now the Minnesota team won. And they were like, you can do that? I was like, yes, yes. And they're like, can you do that on Facebook too? And so, and so for the rest of the afternoon, we went around and hacked the internet. And it was super fun. Um, and, and they learned a bunch about HTML along the way. And I learned that um, sometimes sharing is awesome just because it feels good. That was a moment for me that was really motivating. You know, it was like, I started out being like, well, the internet's boring and complicated, and it starts with TCP connections, and let's talk about this. And it very quickly went to like, no, you know what? This stuff that I take for granted, like putting a class name on a different element in the DOM, is actually really cool. Like, we do really cool and really powerful things all of the time. And that was a nice moment for me to remember that, and also to share some of that passion and enthusiasm with other people who then came back later and were like, can we hack the internet some more? <laughs> and eventually we learned more about uh, HTML and how that worked. So sharing feels good. And it's OK to do things sometimes just because it feels good or just because you want to. And, um, and so you know, lucky for us, each and every one of us has something that we can share. We all have this opportunity that we can go out and inspire others and feel good about doing that. Um, we all have ideas that we can as mentors. I press, don't press that button. Um, <laughs> We have, you know, um, 
simply by adding our voice to the pool, to Drupal's community, we help increase the diversity of the community. And just that act of sharing is going to help us solve new problems in new ways. Drupal, sharing is going to make Drupal better. Um, taking the time to teach others helps them make Drupal better. You taking your time to contribute code or to volunteer at an event helps make Drupal better. Sharing makes you smarter. When you, if you really want to master a skill, teach someone else how to do it. Share that knowledge with someone else. Um, and you know, the, the amount of time that it takes to prepare and be comfortable to give a presentation, I've learned a lot just from getting ready to do this presentation that I'll be able to carry forward in the future. Um, sharing creates opportunities. That might be in the form of a job. It might be in the form of an opportunity to go visit a friend that you met on the internet in a country that you've never been to, in a city that you've always wanted to visit and see some cool castle or try some new cuisine. And sometimes sharing just feels good and it's okay to do things because it feels good. So, so my, my call to action to everyone here, uh, as you're uh, going through the rest of your day at DrupalCon, uh, as you go back in, you know, are in your own communities and you're figuring out, um, what am I going to do now? I'm really enthusiastic and expired that DrupalCon is over. I want you to think about what it is that you're going to share, how you're going to support others who have figured out what it is that they want to share, and how we can all do that better together. Ta -da. Hey. Is this thing on? All right. How about uh, a great big thank you to Joe? Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Really appreciated that. So I have got some questions for you. Would you like some water? You've got some? OK. So my first question, after listening to this amazing presentation all about how we can come together as a community and make ourselves better by making the community better, is how do we do more of that? Do you have any tips or any suggestions for people who want to help grow their local communities? What growth hacking techniques could you suggest for us? <laughs> um, or other buzzwords that you'd like yeah, to strategically yeah, no. play. You know, I think, I think there are a lot of uh, ways that we can grow our community, uh, especially at a local level. I think maybe a, a really important one for me and something that I think about a lot is making sure that, you know, as someone who is active in the local community, um, trying really hard to make sure that people have a, a really positive first or second or third experience um, when they attend an event or when they participate in our community, taking the time to say thank you, um, just making sure that like people's initial impression is a good one so that they want to come back and do it again and, and we'll continue to grow the community that way because if we scare people away, it's, we're going to have a hard time growing our community. Excellent. Um, if you were to uh, see a community that was maybe not very diverse, you mentioned diversity in several ways, what do you think the people who are in that community can do to foster more diversity? What, what should they be thinking about and what actions should they be taking to bring new and different people into their local communities? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I think being conscious of it, first of all, is an important step. Like being willing to say diversity is important to me and to us, and I want to improve that and make it better. Um, and, and like, if you say it out loud, other people will know. Like, yeah, I should I should probably think about that and help with it. Um, I think that you know taking the in the community that I'm the most familiar with in Minneapolis, uh, one of the things that we've done recently to try to increase the diversity of our group is sort of reassessing 
how and when we as a community get together and, and recognizing that like maybe having a happy hour at a bar isn't always going to be the best place for people <laughs> to come. It's a good place for a lot of people, but we should also maybe consider doing things during lunchtime sometimes so that people can participate. Um, we should consider going to not a bar so that people that don't want to go to a bar can participate. Um, and making sure that we find opportunities to um, allow people to get involved in the community sort of in a way that works for them and not just assume that they're going to be able to do it the same way that we've all that we do it interesting so like varying formats and giving people different experiences yeah and maybe different places yeah and i think um, that's part of like making sure that people have a positive experience that mm -hmm. first time too mm -hmm. it's like you know if you're a person who is not interested in uh <clears throat> who does not like attending events that take place in a, at a loud bar um that first experience might not be positive if that's your only option. But if you do like, you know, getting together with a small group of people and um, drawing things on whiteboards, we, you know, making sure that we can facilitate those types of interactions. Cool. So um, sounds like there's a couple of things in there that might be detractors to growing communities. What other barriers do you see in uh, community growth, and how uh, how might you solve those? Do you have any solutions? in mind <laughs> I feel like I just keep giving the same answer be nice to people <laughs> <laughs> just don't be a jerk yeah <laughs> don't Basically. be a jerk the takeaway yeah <laughs> um, what I makes think it that hard for you I mean you mentioned like the demoralization that you felt but were there any difficulties around the technical aspect of contributing yeah. or for non-technical people maybe who are getting involved might they have Difficulties. I think the thing that's always been the hardest for me is just feeling like like it, feeling like I have something to contribute, um, and fe not feeling like an imposter, and feeling comfortable like like going up to you know yourself or Angie or people in the community who I look up to and being able to say, "Hi, I've got a patch that I'd like you to review," or "I have a question about this thing." Um, that for me personally, that has always been one of the biggest struggles uh, to participating and and so I think about that a lot and I, especially anytime that I'm meeting someone new or I'm interacting with people it's like re remember what that experience was like for yourself so that you can make sure that it's good for the, this person that you're interacting with and you know it's like I get that yeah at this point my face is on a lot of videos that people watch and learn about Drupal and it's, you know, I, I meet people at DrupalCon and it's, um, you know, I've seen your videos, it's awesome, thank you for everything you did. And I try to remember like, this person just made a real, took that really big step of walking over and saying hi and introducing themselves. I want to make sure that I, you know, appropriately respond and, and put as much energy into saying hello and thank you and what are you doing here and what's your name and how would you like to get involved with Drupal is they put in the energy that they put into kind of getting over that hurdle of just coming over and being willing to say, hi, my name is Joe. Okay, so I like the way that you answered that and giving tips about like how to approach someone who approaches you because that's not always very easy either. Yeah. Being on the other end of that, I can help people and what do I say to someone who just walked up to me? Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that. Uh, what would you say today in terms of contribution, you have a lot of passion about giving back to the community. Is there something that still inspires you to keep going back to Drupal and keep giving more? Uh, yeah, there's a, a lot Broken of things. Stuff. There's a lot of things that <laughs> keep me coming back to Drupal <laughs> and, and having done this for so many years. Um, you know, for me, I think the... I love the fact that we all work together to build this tool and this community that is empowering others to have some of the same opportunities that I've gotten to have. Like, I, I think it's so cool that I've been able to get a job, you know, get paid to do something that I love to do and travel and make new friends. And I really want other people to have that opportunity too. And so that's like the thing that gets me like out to the local meetup and willing to interested in talking to people or willing to contribute to Drupal and it's like 
I think you're you're probably not alone in that. I think everybody here yeah. can relate to that feeling of we're doing this together and that just feels really great. I, I really liked that slide where you said that. Yeah. Uh, quick question around something that's maybe not so easy. Can you talk to me about one of the more challenging contribution moments or one of the more challenging uh, aspects of doing your work in the community mm -hmm. or f trying to foster the community that you've had and maybe how you overcame that? Yeah, you know, I think, again, sort of the, the thing that continues to be the most challenging for me is just um, stepping outside of my own little bubble and being willing to, like, say hi to someone and not be like, I got, I got to go to the bathroom and going <laughs> washing my hands and not coming back. Um, and, you know, I think learning that, going through the experience of having done that a few times and learning that... Um, 99% of the time, the fact that I did come back and I and continued to have conversations with people um, helped me advance my own career and, and advance Drupal and like actually get things done versus like just walking away and being shy in the corner uh, and, and never actually asking my questions and getting answers to them. Um, so, so that's the most challenging thing, but having gotten through it a few times, what I've learned is that there's a lot of benefit and a lot of rewards to having done that, and so I just try to remember that. And awesome. Thank you very much, Joe. We're out of Thank time. You. And so I just want to say that was a wonderful experience that we just had there all together. I'm having the feels about it. And um, I invite everybody to go and have some coffee in our lovely exhibit hall and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.